Okay, this is EENG360, and I'm going to do a little video on listing 1.1 in your textbook. 1.1 uh, is a, um, a one bit comparator, and let's see if I have a diagram of that guy. Okay, here we go. We have um, a one bit comparator. We have two bits coming in, I0, I1. Um, when they're equal, 0, 0, we're going to have a 1 at the output. When they're not equal, we're going to have a 0. When they're equal, 1, 1, we're going to have a 1 at the output. Now I can write an SOP expression. Um, if I just look at my 1's, I0 prime, I1 prime, or with I0, I1, and there's my SOP expression. I could also do a POS expression. All right, well, here's the circuit I'm going to implement. I'm going to do the SOP implementation. I0 and I1 are my inputs. EQ is my output, and it's a two-level and or network. All right, this is listing 1.1 in your notes, so let's go ahead and uh, let's do that. Let's do a new project. File, new project. Okay, machine's a little slow. Here, it's coming. And let's just call this guy a listing 1.1. One, all right. Uh, we're using VHD or HDL, okay. And then here you've got some hardware things. The family we're using is the Spartan 3E, so make sure that's set. Now within the Spartan 3E family, there's many devices, and we want the XC3S500E. And then for that particular devices, there's several type of packages. We want a flat grid 320. And I think everything else should be okay. Now down here, VHDL source analysis. Could, uh, 93 is fine. The preferred language, VHDL, you could do that or Verilog. We're doing a course in VHDL, so choose that. Now I click Next. And there's some information about the listing. And then I'll click Finish. Okay. Now at this point, um, notice over here you have implementation and simulation. Implementation is what you uh, have highlighted or you select the radio button here if you're going to actually program it on an FPGA. I'm going to do simulation on this guy since I don't have a board with me. All right, so I'm going to change that radio button to simulation and then notice these uh, things below it are going to change. Okay, so now I've got a hierarchy there. and If I look at my hierarchy, it's an empty view. Uh, there are current, the view currently contains no files. All right, well, I'm going to do a simulation. So I've got to put some files in there. So make sure that guy's selected. Go to Project, New Source. And we have uh, all kinds of files we could put in there. And what I want is a VHDL module. And let me call that, uh, oh, let's just call it, um, well, I'll just call it, well, let's call it Core. I don't know. Yeah, VHDL module. We'll call it core. The main, the main component, the main core. All right. And then I'll do next. And now here it's going to prompt me for a bunch of stuff, but I'm not going to use this at this point. I'm going to actually um, do everything by hand. So I'm going to do next and finish. And at that point, what it does, if I go over here to my tree, it adds a VHDL file called core. And I called it core simply because it's the, it's only one VHDL file. It's the main thing. Now here it is on the right hand side and it stubbed out a whole bunch of stuff for me. I'm going to get rid of all the comments so we can focus on what is actually stubbed out. And then, uh, yeah, so that's basically what it stubbed out. Now you'll notice you have a library statement. Well, you can use a lot of libraries in your VHDL modules. There's all kinds of libraries. We're going to bring in the IEEE library and that's a library, IEEE with semicolon. But then within a library, libraries contain packages. So that IEEE library contains many packages. What we're going to do is we're going to access the package called Standard Logic 1164. Okay? And within a package, you have all kinds of types, functions, operators. We're going to bring in everything in the Standard Ele uh, Logic 1164 package that is one of many packages in the IEEE library. So for the most part, these are pretty much going to be the same throughout the course. We might bring in another package later on. Well, a VHDL file consists of two things. It consists of an entity. Okay, right here, those are your entity. You're going to put stuff inside here. And then it consists of an architecture block. Okay, the entity describes the inputs and outputs. The architecture block says what goes on inside those inputs and outputs. Okay, so now if you go back and look at our, um, our SOP picture, what are our inputs? Well, the inputs are I0, I1, and the outputs are EQ. 
So that goes in my entity block. All right. Let's type those in there. So inside the entity block, you've got a statement called a port statement. And let's see. Uh, it's going to put some parentheses there. There's my port statement. And inside the port statement, you list all your variables. There's I0, I1, and they're of a certain type. They're an input, so I put I in there, and the data type is standard logic. And what that means is those guys can take on values of uh, 0, 1, uh, let's see, uh, unknown X, Z, high impedance, a few others, but mainly 0 and 1s are the ones we're interested in. Okay, so there's I0 and I1. Now we also have an output variable, EQ. Well, that's the name EQ, colon, there's out for the type, it's an output, and it's also standard logic. Right? So what I've basically done in my entity is I've defined my input and my output. Okay, let's bring in uh, stuff right back here and uh, make sure you sync up. There's I0, I1, there's I0, I1, two inputs, there's EQ, which is an output. Okay, and they're basically one bit lines. Now notice I've got some errors here. Well, what are the errors from? Well, this is the common error everybody makes. This guy right here does not have a semicolon. The last line in the port block doesn't have a semicolon. So if I save that, you'll notice down here below, the errors went away. All right, well, that's the input-output. This guy right here describes input-output. Describes input and output. Okay. Now, what goes on inside that guy is done in the architecture block. Well. In the architecture block, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some uh, internal signals. All right? So, for example, we're going to say signal, and then I'm going to have P0 and then P1 for my SOP terms, and they're also going to be of type standard logic. Okay, standard logic. And then what I'm going to do is um, I am going to define those as those uh, SOP terms. I'm going to say P0 is equal to uh, not I0 anded with uh, not I1. And then I'm going to say P1 is equal to, assigned to, I0 and I1. Okay. So what are these guys right here? P0 and P1. P0 is I0 prime anded with I1 prime. P1 is I0 anded with I1. Well, if you go back and look at our expression, what we're basically doing is I'm defining variables here and here. The variable right here is I0 anded with I1. All right, what did I call that guy? I called that one P1. All right, but then what's going on down here? That's I0 prime anded with I1 prime. All right, I think I called that one P0. Yep, I called that one P0. All right. So I've got some internal variables. These variables are like inside the circuit. Let's make a comment there. Uh, inside the circuit. Yeah, inside the circuit. They're internal variables. Well, what do I do once I get P0 and P0? Well, go back to your little window here. Once I get the variables here and here, I OR them together to get EQ. All right, let's do that. Let's OR them together. So down here, I can come along and say, EQ is equal to P0 and P1. Okay. And I do a semicolon. All right, there you go. So at this point right here, let's put some comments in there. What does that guy say? This one says, um, yeah, this is the sum of, oops, let's go back to here, sum of two. product terms, and then down here are the product terms, and there you go. Again, I0, I1 are inputs, EQ is the output, the output is equal to P0, actually that should be an OR, shouldn't it? Not oh, messed up there, should be the ORing of P0, P1, and then P0 is defined as the function of the input, and P1 is defined as the function of the input. Well, at this point right here, you save it, and then what you do is you have to go highlight core, and then when you come down to here, you got to open up the simulator and then double click on behavior check syntax. So double clicking here is essentially like compiling a C program. You're checking all your syntax, okay? And the behavior check syntax, it completed successfully. Let's go back in here and put a semicolon right here. Save it, okay? 
Now notice that green check went away and let's double click behave you'll check syntax. And now I get a red X. Well, it tells me up oh, you know, there should, there's a problem near the end of the uh, parentheses right here. And the problem is this semicolon. Take that out, save it, select it, check syntax, and I should get a nice green little check to say that it compiled. All right, well, that's enough for this guy. We basically have inserted our first VHDL. Three parts, library, entity, and architecture block. Okay. Entity is what goes in and what comes out. Architecture block is what's going on inside. There you go. We'll uh, stop here and continue on in another one.